Hey, this is Arjun Gardenheim. Ryan, what exactly are you saying? Judy, it's time for a new episode of Garden Time. Oh. <laughs> Welcome to Garden Time. We are so excited to not be doing a Zoom meeting right now and actually out in the garden. But we are keeping our distance and we are staying safe. And you know, many of our independent garden centers are open, so please go to their website and see what their precautions are and just be patient and courteous to everyone. Coming up on the show today, we'll be talking about some amazing salvias. We'll also be showing you some plants for a pond or a bog. But coming up first, our tips of the month with Jan. Well, it's mid-May and it's the sound of spring. So you hear birds and then you hear mowers and blowers. <laughs> well, Jan, it's always something in the garden, isn't sure, it? Sure, exactly. I love this time of year. There's so much to do, so much to see, so many surprises that come up where you forgot you planted them. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> that is the fun part. But I went out the other day to <sighs> Seabright Nursery and um, that's only part of what I bought. I bought a bunch of ferns and a bunch of hostas to put on the woodland garden on the, the south side, side here. Well, how so fun. I'm gonna be doing that. And then the other thing to mention, because a lot of people are putting uh, new plants in, is to dig your hole, put the hose in your hole. And it's called mudding in. Put the hose in your hole, in the hole and fill it with water. Put the root in there, take it out of the pot, put it in um, and pull the root system apart a little bit. Put your soil back over the top and that will help that plant get established much better than planting it and then watering it. Wow, wow, that is a good technique. I yeah. think we don't think about that one. You can plant clear into summer that way, but this time of year, it's already dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be something this year. Yeah, it is. Um, I picked this up in back the other day. That's, what do we say, 13 foot circumference. It's a huge uh, one. Fir, grand fir, not grand fir, uh, Douglas fir. Anyway, this is not uncommon. The outside bark on a fir like that is like our skin, and sometimes some comes off. And so, and sometimes too, you might get a woodpecker or something that'll make a hole in a couple places and it'll be a little weaker and fall, or they're looking for insects. But if you see that, your tree is fine. It's still okay. Don't yeah, worry. Don't it's fine. really get panicky. It's fine. Um, prune spring blooming plants after they're done blooming. If you prune them before, you aren't gonna <laughs> have the, it, right. you're not gonna have those flowers. So keep in mind, you can deadhead and for rhodes or azaleas, but there's all sorts of other spring blooming plants that you can prune. Like candy tuft. Yes. That's a really good one. Yeah, all sorts of different things. Excellent. That's so, a good and tip. let's see, guess what? Uh-oh, the lemon, the infamous lemon. Here's the lemon. And it had scale really badly. Mm -hmm. and, and I realized I am, you know, do as I say, not as I do. Um, <laughs> so I got rid of the crawling stage of the, the scale because it's not as protected as it is when it matures and with insecticidal soap. Okay. And there's hardly any scale on this now at all. Um, so the insecticidal soap, keep in mind, my husband used to say when we were teaching Master Gardener, program unless the insect is there when you're spraying it all it's going to do is get clean feet when it walks by later <laughs> okay that's so on it. yeah so this one is doing really well i have been fertilizing it about every two weeks and that's i could do it more uh, and it's a lot better has new growth same thing with this gardenia um, i always get uh, good flowers but i've been uh, more religiously pruning and and uh, and fertilizing it so it's doing really really well. It's beautiful because they're a little tricky but you just really have to keep up on the fertilizer. That's a good tip. Yeah, yeah. And then the other thing is there's a lot of areas we have where we have weeds and we're sure we're going to spray them out or we're going to dig them out or whatever but if you don't get to it use a weed whacker a mower or something and just keep them from going to seed. Yeah, I know I always go take my uh, dandelion flowers out. Yeah and then I'll get to it later, but man, I get those flowers out right away. Yeah, and the, really the last thing is that uh, 
when you bring up plants, either annuals, perennials, whatever it is, check the bottoms of your pots, inside uh, the edges, to make sure you're not bringing any slugs in, into the, your garden or into your greenhouse. Mm -hmm. I had a slug in my greenhouse and I had a whole flat of uh, zinnias and they mowed them off. I have like four left out of a whole flat. So be careful and make sure you might be doing some, put some slug bait out in your greenhouse or out in around your new plants. Right, no, that is a great idea. Yeah. And then, you know, people are at home and, you know, we're really doing a lot of things in our garden, but if we didn't plant yet, it's mid-May, is it too late to plant vegetables? Not at all, oh. not at all. Um, the latest Ray and I ever put our vegetable garden in was June 22nd. Okay. And if you look at a tomato you put in then and you look at it in September, you won't be able to tell the difference at the ones you put in in April. Ah, oh, that is and good. And you can still seed all summer long, just figure out if it's a warm season crop or a cool season crop. Okay. That is good because sometimes we procrastinate and oh, we sure. just haven't, there's so Not many projects late. and we Not haven't gotten late. to it. Yeah. Uh, well, thanks so much for all this information. We'll see you next month. Okay. And if you have any other questions, please go to gardentime.tv. We have loads of information on there. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. So for the parts of your life that just can't stop, it's essential to keep moving forward safely. And now it's easier than ever to own a brand new Subaru from Capital. Not only can you shop hundreds of Subarus online and get questions answered instantly, but now you can test drive, finance, and even complete your purchase all from the comfort of your home. So keep planning for the future. We'll be here to help make the road ahead just a little bit smoother. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Look around your home's exterior. Those ugly orange, green, and black algae stains look terrible. Clean them the easy way with 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. It's fast and works on all outdoor surfaces. With 30 Seconds, it's clean when you want it clean. Spring is all about freshness, and you can't get any fresher than Blooming Junction. From new and interesting annuals and perennials that can bring fresh color to your garden, to the freshest of produce from our fields and from local growers. We can also help you be successful with our full slate of timely and helpful classes. Freshen up your home and garden, inside and out, with a visit to Blooming Junction. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens and great tasting food for your table. I'm so excited today to be out here with Carol from Adelman Peonies, standing in this spectacular display bed. Mm -hmm. Now, Carol, you guys are open. We are. We have a lot of space here, and people are enjoying the grass walkways and the wide open spaces. Yeah, and, and things are in their, you know, their full bloom and yeah. glory just coming on right now. You know, it's a great time to come out and see what's what's blooming and the colors of everything, mm -hmm. right? Yep, we're, we're really into bloom. We had a little bit of warm weather that brought it on and colors of everywhere. And is there you know, anything specific people need to know when they c come out as far as, you know, do they need masks or you know, distancing? You know, we all want to be safe while we're out enjoying this. Yes, you know, we have a lot of gardens. signs out to remember your social distancing and it, it's up to the individual if they wear a mask. Okay. And we have a lot of signs and where to stand when you check out and they have it so you don't need to touch much of anything and they have sanitizer if you want to use it and our porta potties have a hand wash station so 
um, and, and being out here in the open, you know, we're not enclosed in any spacing. So, and the gardens are huge. So there's lot, lots of paths where you can stroll and you know, and enjoy all the gardens. And then you also have, you know, the retail area where you can go and, and look and shop for, you know, the, the potted plants already and you're inside for your cut ones. Right, and we have a lot of cut flowers available now because the season's progressing. So uh, then you can take those in your house and enjoy them. Right, so that we can go uh, venture over to the, the potted area here and show us kind of what you have for, okay. for sale over there. Sure. So if you're out getting your walk in and you want to get your steps and you want to view the entire you know, acreage out here, you have a big place that you can walk around. Yes. From the Brook Lake Road to the back is a quarter mile long, so you can get your miles that way. And my grandson ran the other way yesterday, but I don't remember how far he <laughs> said, but you can definitely get your miles in. And it looks like nice grass, you know, walkways, so it's easy to get around and you get lots of steps. And you know, the fields are all open, you know, right. and just looking at this sea of colors, how many different varieties are oh, you guys well, growing? Well, we have well over 350. Wow. So, lots of color. And it looks like, you know, a lot of them you can purchase up here that are already potted if you wanted to take yep. something home. In instant gratification for your garden. Right. And this is a beautiful one you have sitting here. Which one have we yes, chosen This here? is Alexander Walcott. The coral colors are what have been flying off the shelf this past weekend. Right. And then you guys are always, you know, breeding and, yes. and coming up with, with new ones all, all right. the time. So. And we have yellow ones and those are a real new color too. For are, are there new trends that, you, that you're following with the, with the peonies? Or well, mostly, mostly besides beautiful flowers, shorter stems so that they don't fall over when it rains. Right. Nice strong stem for that big flower to hold it up. Right, and so you know, with the potted plants, you can purchase those here and come out and pick those up. You can order those online also. You can order ahead and come pick up. Otherwise, we uh, have bare roots that we ship in the fall all over the United States. And then how late are you guys open in the season? for? We're going to be open through June 15th. And then you're open, open every day, day of the week? Yes, yes. And then you know you have the outside nine, nine to six. Nine to six, okay. Mm -hmm. And then you have the outdoor sales area, but you also sell the cut flowers also. Yes, right? inside we have the cut flowers in a cooler so you can pick out what varieties you want. We don't have every variety in the cooler but whatever right. we've been cutting. But you know now is definitely a great time to come out oh, where yeah. you can you know the see, see the fields in full bloom, you can purchase the potted plants, you can order the cut flowers online. Right. You know for all your information you know you can go to your website or Facebook page or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over and and come out and enjoy the peonies. I'm at Little Baja in East Burnside today, and you know there's a little construction going on, but it's not going to stop us talking about cool sedums and succulents. And I'm with Jared, and Jared, you have not only pottery, but you have plants now to put in that pottery. Oh sure, yeah, we've always carried a nice assortment of succulents, just to, you know, kind of this and that to really tie in that certain space of yours. And I think they go great with your pottery, because I think they just look nice in the terracotta or the natural concrete. It just adds um, something to that container. Certainly. Well, you know, we always talk about how good terracotta is. It's especially good for succulents, cactus, things like that. It breathes, help uh, promote that healthy root system. Ah, uh, yeah, it helps with that drainage. Mm -hmm. So are there any kind of rules, do you think, with sedums and succulents to make it look so attractive? Um, well, I've always followed a rule by working with odd numbers. Okay. Threes and fives always go good. Kind of just, uh, I don't know. Um, okay, also, also, you know, contrast. You know, nice. get some different colors in there and repetition. That kind of pulls it all together. Ah, I also like all the different textures. And look, and even this one is blooming. Yeah. And that really adds an element too. Sure. It's on fire. It's on parade here. Ah. And it's interesting as you get more used to it. You know, you'll kind of figure out each plant and what's so special about it. And, Wonderful. And uh, yeah. So Jared, we're going to pot this one up in a few minutes, but I see that you have some really unique small pots. So how could we use those? Oh, we sure do. We have these nice little cubes in various sizes. Very cool. We have little wall pockets you can hang on the wall and those really make a nice touch. Um, but yeah, one's an odd number as well. So it's a good one to do. Um, <laughs> right. Something like this is real simple. You know, basically get that in there. Oh, not even plant it. Just well, put the pot in there. Um, it's either way. Um, sure. That's, that's fine there, just like that. And uh, just to keep it simple today, and then we'll put, uh, Some dress it up stones. here. Excellent. And then what about these little kind of statues and things? We could add those too? See, that's the fun part. And, uh, well, it's all fun. 
<laughs> but uh, so it's sure handles. nice adding the finishing touches. Yeah, and maybe this little bridge? Yeah, I'd say so. Oh, and we could add more stones if we need to. Very nice. Simple. And then, so what kind of soil would we use in this bigger pot? Certainly. Um, you know, a lot of folks would just pick out a bag of pre-mix, like cactus or succulent mix. I happen to have some regular old potting soil All and right. a bag of perlite, so I just mix it half and half just to kind of get that really good drainage. All right, let's get that up here. Excellent. All right, and put it in. Awesome, it's all pre-mixed here. Okay. And so it's just like planting any other container, you want to fill it up. Well, that mix of perlite and soil are really going to help with the drainage for these plants. Yeah, I think so. All right. So we picked out three sedums that, and, suck, and hens and chicks that really look nice. Tell me a little bit about them. Um, well, this had some nice color. It's just really vibrant and it would be a good, uh, if it was a more center centerpiece, you okay. could put it in the middle or you could put it back toward the side. All right. if you, Kind of depends on where you're planning on placing it. I like that it's so tall, plus it's that blue-green. That's really, yeah. really pretty. I think that'll contrast nice with this guy. And look at that red, and that's one of the flowers. So we're yeah. gonna make a little hole for that one. And that's gonna go right on the side there, all right. What and then the last there? one is hens and chicks. Yeah, and this one has all kinds of babies coming yeah, out. Yeah, look at that, that is just great. And so what kind of sunlight will we put this in? You know, they really do best with the four or five hours of that morning sunlight. Okay. A lot of folks tend to think that they really need a lot of sun all day. But, mm -hmm. You know, that scorching midday sun can be a little harsh. Some will do better than others, you know, like cactus are usually fine. But right. um, four or five hours of sunlight towards the morning hours would be ideal. And you could let them dry out between watering? Most definitely. I think that's probably the most important thing is oh, that perfect. it uh, drains out completely between waterings. and. Uh, Maybe once a week, every two weeks, you're going to kind of figure out your feel. You know, you don't want those. Uh, it's just too damp all the time. Definitely. So really, this is a, such an easy project to do. And we did talk about that construction earlier, right. but is it going to be difficult for people to get here? You know, we're excited. We have uh, a little bit more safe, secure parking. Uh, you don't necessarily have to park on the side street here anymore. Uh, we have a parking lot on 15th and Ankeny. It's gated, real easy. Oh, that is nice. Well, you know, you have to come down. You get your pottery. You can also get plants and get some lights, lots of ideas for some containers on your deck or on your front porch. Please go to Gardentime.tv. We'll click over their website. You can see exactly where that new parking is and how to get to Little Baja. Thanks Excellent. so much, Jared. It's great. As always, thanks. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery, where spring is our favorite time of year. It's the time to prepare your garden for planting. We invite you to get a jump on spring with our huge selection. Let Portland Nursery's staff of professionals help with groceries you can grow. We've got the seeds, veggie starts, and expertise to ensure your success. Visit PortlandNursery.com for a list of classes and special events. Portland Nursery, helping make your backyard your favorite destination at 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Terra Casa invites you to no contact outdoor potlot shopping by appointment. Shop outdoor pottery, fountains, yard decor, and furniture. For products inside the store, we can text photos or FaceTime with you. Create your sanctuary with Terra Casa. At Garland Nursery, you'll find Top quality plants. Four generations of garden know-how. Fun and fantastic garden decor. And the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. I am at Hughes Water Gardens right near Wilsonville with Eamon Hughes. And Eamon, you know, this is the time of year we're adding plants and flowering plants to our gardens, yeah. but really we can't forget our water features to add plants. You know, there's a wonderful range of water plants available and, and a lot of transition plants that will come from the garden you can also use in your water garden. 
and in the surrounds of it. Create a bog garden area oh, really yeah. will help you a lot. And is there a certain way that looks better that maybe it makes it look more natural to kind of stage them so that we get more enjoyment? Yeah, I think you need to layer them properly. If your you know, main view from the house is straight out to a pond, you don't want to hide it. So you go with some low plants there and then transition up into some medium plants and then there's some taller plants at the back oh, just neat. to give it structure. And we have a few here on the table just to show you some All of right. the lower plants. Creeping jelly people may be very familiar with. Uh, this is the yellow form of it. Pretty. And then this is a little confetti uh, pennywort. It has a really cute little pink edge to it. Nice no texture. flower that you'd notice, but it does cover. And then bacopa, this is a little tender. Oh. has beautiful blue flowers all summer. And if it doesn't survive for you, it's, it's not an expensive plant. So right. It's nice to have that flowering all summer. Very nice. And then some grasses that are low. And then some low grasses. The black mondo that people are familiar with in their landscape just loves water. We'll Neat. often put them on an island floating in mm -hmm. the pond and it just thrives. And then I, on the table here, I put two of the corkscrew rushes. This is a really cute miniature one. It is. And then if your pond is larger, you can do, use the, the daddy of them. <laughs> it gets <laughs> a little bigger, yeah. A little, little, little bigger and a little thicker stem. But this is a very cute one in a small, intimate garden. Nice. So that's your, your lower, you know, front of your pond. And then for springtime, it's wonderful to include something like this caltha. This came out this year, probably in January. It had such a lovely January. Wow. This flowered very early. It's finished flowering now as we approach June, late May. And what color is that flower? That's a yellow. It's like a oh. buttercup flower. Oh, beautiful. It. It's, it's lovely. And then this is one of my favorite plants. Uh, this is pickerel weed, Pontideria. What I like about this is it has a beautiful deep blue, purpley flower oh, all summer. So this nice. will start flowering in June continue on through the end of September. Very nice. So it's really good that way. Okay. And then the next layer up, if you go up higher, will be some of the irises. And these are Louisiana irises. They're water irises. will grow perfectly well in water and, and thrive there. And uh, what else have I? On this side, I have some rushes and reeds. Okay, like this one over here. And that structure will stay all winter. It's something to think about as well in that you want some structure there all year. And then the other things that will die down for the winter, you know, you'll have to clean up and, and trim up, but uh, you still have your structure from the larger plants. Right. And it's really nice to, because the same rules kind of apply, that you do want some winter interest, you, you want do. flowering plants, yeah. you want different textures for yeah. your water gardens too. And also trying to get a continuity of flower. Uh, I spoke about the caltha, and then Look coming in now are these beautiful primulas, beautiful. you know. Now these, are more in a transition zone and I often say to people when you build your water feature if you have a scrap piece of liner just on the edges dig a hollow out put that liner in and then put your soils in that hollow in the liner holds water and acts as a bog oh, so you can grow things like the primula that love really moist soils mm -hmm. or the blatilla orchid wow, which is a, an amazing thing it just goes on for weeks and weeks Beautiful. That's uh, a sort of semi-aquatic orchid mm -hmm. of the area. And then this other plant here would do well in that boggy area? This would do well in, this is the zebra's quill, and it just has yeah, magnificent so striping on the leaves and a pretty little pink flower. In a larger feature, this might be a bit lost, but mm -hmm. definitely in an intimate small one, it'd be a wonderful plant to have. Very nice. So, and that's something to be aware of. Speak to whatever you know garden center you go to, to get your aquatic plants. Speak to them about the size of your feature so that you don't buy something that's going to overpower it or, or invade all over your yard. Right. So sort of ask for the plants that will balance out in your particular feature. Uh, so you, those are the tips really. When you come here to use water gardens, bring maybe the dimensions of your water feature so when you talk to the staff here, they can get the right plants for that beautiful, to make that more beautiful in your backyard. Thanks yeah. so much, Eamon. Thank you, Jim. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. 
For over 100 years, Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts have provided tree and shrub care services to the Portland metropolitan area. From large tree and small shrub pruning, tree removal and stump grinding, we can handle all your tree care needs. Our arborists diagnose and treat your toughest insect and disease problems. We also have organic solutions for growing and maintaining healthy gardens, as well as organic nutrition for your trees and shrubs. Collier and Bartlett, environmentally friendly since 1907. Terra Casa invites you to no contact outdoor potlot shopping by appointment. Shop outdoor pottery, fountains, yard decor, and furniture. For products inside the store, we can text photos or FaceTime with you. Create your sanctuary with Terra Casa. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Well, here I am with Ben. We're out here at Shriners Iris, and we're standing in your beautiful display gardens. Granted, we all have this to ourselves right now. So what's going on, Ben? Well, we're not able to open the gardens to the public this year. So instead, we're going to have uh, cut flowers and potted iris available 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily in our parking lot. Um, curbside pickup available as well. Uh, we'll still ship uh, mail order cuts. Uh, you can find those at ShrinersGardens.com. Uh, we're still shipping all of our plants. Uh, most of those go out July through September. And then we're also offering a virtual bloom season. Um, so daily updates with pictures and videos. Um, you can find those on our website too and our social media pages. So even though you can't come out to the garden to see everything blooming in person, you can still go on to your website or your social media and get the updates of the blooms to still see what they're going. Yeah, so we're trying to give people, you know, kind of updates on what the garden looks like as the season progresses, uh, right. fields and, you know, all those. And so that's you, just kind of the times that we're in right now is trying to do everything virtually and online. But And then if they still want to, you know, find something they like, like you said, you, know, you can still get the cut flowers and you do ship those directly to them, right? Correct, yeah. yeah. And if, like I said, if you're local, we do, we still sell them out of our parking lot. Okay, um, so they can come, come to the store here and, and pick up their purchases. And do they order online ahead of time to, to pick up? or can they if, come if, they want, if someone wants to do curbside, they can call our office and arrange for that. Otherwise, they can just come and, and pick up the flowers um, here. Okay. And then, you know, for they can enjoy the blooms now, and you said then they can also still order the, the, the rhizomes to be shipped later. Correct, yeah. Our website is still op open, we're still taking orders, still going to ship everything out. You know, and the gardens are looking spectacular right now, and there's, I'm sure you have a couple of your favorites, right? Yeah, so we're standing in front of this yellow right here is actually named Garden Time after the show. Right. Um, it's a very bright yellow, it has good branching, good uh, bud count. Um, anything with eight or more buds um, is usually a pretty good iris, okay. so that's Garden Time. I'm also holding this uh, purple, it's called Fiddling Around. It's a reblooming iris, um, so it will bloom now and then again later this summer. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a, it. Seems like a nice trait for a for an iris plant. Right. Yeah, and the, the culture is a little bit different on those, but um, and, and rebloom is not guaranteed. Um, but this one's still a pretty good rebloomer. Oh, that's great. You know, so if you're you know you're looking into trying to get your irises, you know, if you're looking for cut flowers or if you're looking for you know the rhizomes, you can still get on your website and your social media. You, know, you can order online through your website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over for all the information you need on the iris. So Ben, I appreciate being with you today. Thanks for having me.
give a few ideas to keep squirrels and cats out of your raised beds. You know, invariably you put all this nice soil on and then you get squirrels and cats using it as a playground. So we planted some carrot seeds. You could do this for any kind of a seedling. And then before um, they are coming up, we put bird netting down. So the cats or the squirrels cannot get in there and disturb everything and ruin your crop. Now these seedlings are about two inches and so we're gonna take the um, bird netting off because you don't want it to hinder any of your harvesting later on. And then another tip you can use is wrapping twine over the top of the netting. So we went through and put a little push pins in the top and created kind of a little zigzag over the top and what that does is also hinders the squirrels and the cats from getting in here. They may still be able to walk around but they're not going to be able to do their business and their clawing. So that string can be the zigzag back and forth once in, again, you can leave that string on until the plants are up, um, or you can take, take it off after they get big enough for harvesting. So these are just a couple ideas to keep your raised beds just for your vegetables. Find everything you need for spring at Al's Garden and Home. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Dram for Lawn and Garden, available at garden centers near you. Look around your home's exterior. Those ugly orange, green, and black algae stains look terrible. Clean them the easy way with 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. It's fast and works on all outdoor surfaces. With 30 Seconds, it's clean when you want it clean. I am at Blooming Junction today with Ron, and Ron, you know, summer's coming. It's going to be a warm one. That's and so right. maybe we're looking for some trees that cast shade. I think a shade tree would be so nice for most people to have on their property. Yeah, um, a lot of people are starting to look into that now, especially after we had that weekend of yeah, really high kind temperatures. Of warm, yeah. <laughs> it kind of makes them think, oh, I need to cool my, my house down a little bit. Um, and a shade tree does that. Um, it provides cooling effect for your home. Um, it also provides uh, a shady area in your yard if you have full sun, which, you know, opens it up to a whole another world of plant material that you can plant. That is nice. And so if we're going to site it, say, to cool the house, is there a special direction I want to put it in conjunction with the house? Yeah, usually it's on the, the southwest side of the home where you get that afternoon sun, the hottest sun of the day. Mm. And so we'd want a deciduous tree there. We wouldn't want a conifer. That's right. You know, I have a lot of people that come in and they want uh, a tree um, for a cooling effect on their home. Um, and they may be talking about something evergreen. And I, I point out that um, the sun that you're blocking in the summertime is that same sun in the wintertime. <laughs> right. Um, and you want that sun coming in the wintertime. It's, it's gray enough without uh, right, losing right. any sun. So you're going to put that conifer some other place. That's right. Uh, so you have some beautiful samples here. So what are these? Well, this is one of my very favorites. Oh, this is beautiful. a raywood ash. Um, this is a medium to large tree, about 40, 40 to 50 feet tall, um, which is a medium. Uh, sure shade tree. Um, I love it because it's got a, a, a very fine leaf. It provides a dappled shade um, and then the, the fall color is just brilliant. Nice. It's a purplish red color. That is beautiful. And, and that's that's a great thing about the deciduous trees too is for the most part they go through fall color. Right and you should be looking for that. Yeah, Instead absolutely. of just one kind of view you have all different things that are going on with those trees all right. year long. They're generally two or three season trees. Nice, nice. And these on your right side are beautiful too. These are uh, Nissa selvaticas. This one's wildfire here. Um, this is, you know, a, a moderate sized tree. 
Um, but you can't beat these for fall color. Beautiful. Just intense uh, ruby red fall color. It's Whoa. just incredible. Nice. And kind of medium size too? Yes. Beautiful. So we're going to walk down this line here because you have all kinds of trees. So what else do we want to consider when we're looking for trees for our for our yard, for our property? Well, there are certain things, you know, um, certain trees do better in a lawn situation than other trees. Um, uh, you want to make sure that when you're siding your tree um, and, and planting that tree that you are paying particular attention to the tree. There's a lot of people that come in, they want a, a tree for their lawn and, and they think that they can just water with the irrigation that they water their lawn. Oh, sure. You really need to sp pay special attention the first few years. Make sure those roots go down um, so you don't have problems in the future. Right, right. And so, because we get so hot in the summertime and then there's the hot wind, so you really need to make sure that it's really paid attention to. That's right. Stake it. Um, keep it staked for about two years and then remove those stakes so it develops a strong structure. Mm -hmm. So what other uh, varieties do you have here you want to talk about? Um, this is one of our larger ones. This is a yellow wood here. Pretty. Um, this is a very nice tree too. It goes through... Um, some yellow fall color, not quite as brilliant, but it's a great uh, large tree um, if you're looking for something big, fast growing. And Ron, what about trees that maybe don't need staking? Do you have anything that would be maybe a smaller tree? We sure do. You want to take a look at some? Sure, let's go. Now around this area seems like there's a lot of flowering trees, so this one looks like there's a rose on it. Yeah, this is a beauty. This is a new one for me. This is a brandywine crab apple. Wow. And it's just got a great little rose, um, almost like a Cecil Brunner or something. Very nice. Um, a lot of the flowering uh, trees, the flowering pears, um, cherries, plums, they all make great small um, shade trees. Right. I even see like a Styrax here that's really pretty, kind of a weeping shade. Yeah. So even for a smaller space. Right. This is a weeping and we do have the uprights and they, they do um, add additional shade to your garden. And really here at Blooming Junction you have trees that can go in any um, application for a garden, a property, that would really enhance it so much. Yeah, that's right. So really, if you're looking for shade trees, any kind of tree for your property or garden, come out to Blooming Junction, talk to Ron and his staff, and it really makes it so easy to get the one that looks best for you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Judy. This time of year, you may be noticing ants outside the foundation of your home or actually inside your home. So we have some products that will help rid your home of ants. This one is from Taro, and it's actually a granular product that you sprinkle around the outside foundation of your home, and it is water resistant. Another product by Taro is actually a trap that has borax in it, and you take these traps and you find where the trails of ants are, and you put it right by the trails, and it has the ants will go to it. And both of these products, you need to be careful around children and pets. And of course, you can do a homemade recipe of water, sugar, and borax. Then you mix that up and you dip like uh, cotton balls in it. You place those cotton balls around where you see the trails of the ants, and that takes care of them too. But what we really love now is this new product from Bonide. It has citronella, clove, and cedar oil. That's about all that's in it, so you can spray it around where the tracks are. You can also cover cracks in the between like levels of floor and window sills everywhere you want to spray it. it smells great and not only does it kill it also repels and it's safe for kids and pets so if you have a problem with ants you can go to any of your independent garden centers to ask for help and to pick up these products you can also ask questions about any other pest problems too while you're there Color, color, color. When you think of your garden, think of color. Then think of Margie's Farm and Garden. High quality plants and great customer service are our trademark. We make sure you're happy with every purchase. Whether you're a first time gardener or a seasoned professional, we'll help you be successful every time you step into your garden. Vegetables or herbs, hanging baskets or perennials, trust Margie's Farm and Garden. Just off I-5 near Aurora. Since 1926, the Bonide Company has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. 
Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew controls most common garden insects and is derived from a naturally occurring bacteria to help with your organic gardening. It's safe to use even on fruits and vegetables. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. Well, what fun it is to be standing with Brian at Sagawa's. And Brian, today we are going to be talking about something that we, we really discuss a lot because it's so important, which is pollinator plants. And then we're also yes. going to throw in some beautiful hummingbirds as well. So tell me about this stunning thing right here. Great topics. Yeah, thanks, William. Um, well, it's a, actually a native to the area, uh, flowering currant, the red flowering currant. Um, just a beautiful pinkish. It's very much an attractant for all the hummingbirds. They and just it, go right to it. And it does attract pollinators too. So really, you get a, a double whammy with it this is. plant because you'll get the hummingbirds Added who value. like it yep. and the, the pollinators as well. And you know, we would be remiss, Brian, if we didn't talk <laughs> about berries. berries because I think a lot of people get pollination as necessary, but they really are pollinators That's as right. well. It's exactly, the blueberries definitely need, it always helps to have two varieties or you know, hope for the, the bees uh, passing on the pollen there right. for the pollination. And then, you know, there's all kinds of flowers that you guys carry that are great for pollination. Like the, both of these here are stunning. Yeah, I think it's the that magenta scarlet for the hummingbirds or just, but whatever it is, uh, you always know because they're going because to be they flock, like them exactly they're <laughs> going to be flocking there but um it's always nice to see them you know pretty much all year round they're there not the flowers but the hummingbirds right, right. are out there but um so you know you talk about the ribes being a native but also you have mahonias and they are a native that's right oregon grape uh, beautiful yellow flowers uh, very much a great attractant for the the bees and stuff. And then we would be remiss to not mention this beauty. Tell me about it because there's so many different kinds now. That's right. There's variegated leaves. They have some pink, uh, new ones all the time actually, William. But this one's a dwarf compact one, so there's one for every situation. But it's I think it's the abundance of flowers. They last so long. Bees just find a way to, to always come out there. And it is, we call it the lily of the valley shrub, mm -hmm. but it actually is Pieris, right? That's correct. Yeah, they're wonderful and plants. And the rhododendron family there, and uh, just grown the same as the rhododendron or azalea. And then there's, uh, again, so many types of perennials that bloom. All of all of these varieties will be attracting pollinators to, to your That's garden. That's right. You can get, well, if you coordinate it right, you can have them you know, bloom at different times. Uh, right. There's all yeah. sorts of different things, purposes you can use. Uh, short ones, tall ones, but that's what's nice about perennials. You know, there's just um, there's always something that's there for exactly you. Exactly right. And you know, I have to say that one of the things too I love about pollinating plants is this is a Daphne fragrance and yes. the fragrance. Oh, so it appeals yeah. not only to hummingbirds and to mm -hmm. insects and Our to bees. Own. It yeah. appeals to us even oh, more. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, Daphne's are one of the strongest to me, I think, and uh, just hard to beat that one. You know, very fragrant. Well, you know, we always talk about the beauty of, of pollinator plants in the garden and the benefit it can bring yeah. to all of us. So for more information, go to gardentime.tv. We're going to click you over to their website, then come on up here and come to Sagawa's and pick out some wonderful pollination plants for your own space. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks, William. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. Trim is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. Tram products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. Tram for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. 
Do you have a leaning or broken fence? Fix a broken fence with ease. Made in Oregon, the sturdy fence post bracket can mend your drooping fence. Strong winds, falling debris, dry rot, and wayward drivers can all cause havoc on your once sturdy fence. Our sturdy bracket attaches to your existing fence and is easily installed in 30 minutes. Limit waste, materials, and save money by fixing your existing fence. Purchase online at sturdfence.com or visit participating PAR Lumber and Pro Build stores. Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and 2020 has definitely been a year to remember, but I wanted to share a few things with you today that I think are going to be more memorable and a more positive tone. These are some of our brand new introductions for 2020 that are available at Bauman Farms. In the past, I had talked about these giant geraniums I have had and found on one of my trips to Europe. This year, there's a brand new variety. It's called Tall, Dark, and Handsome. And you can see this beautiful fellow right next to me here with these beautiful dark leaves with the light green edge and the beautiful orange blossoms that contrast so great against the foliage. This plant will eventually, after a couple years, get up to six or seven feet tall. We have them available in the 12 inch deco pot here with the trellis already on it or in eight inch pots that you can take home and put it into your flowers at home. We have it in orange, pink, and like a nice little lavender color. At Bauman Farms, we are known for our beautiful hanging baskets. So I'm always looking for what is new in the petunia world. And let me tell you, this beauty that we found this year, Midnight Gold, has been a stunning addition to many of our hanging baskets. This winter, when I was trying to put together all of our combinations, I, to be honest, wasn't sure what to put with it. But beautiful lime green potato vine or creeping jenny is absolutely stunning in a combination with this petunia or just have it by itself. We have this available in six inch pots or four inch pots. One of our best selling plants at the farm has always been hot lip salvia because it blooms all summer long and the hummingbirds love it. This is its sister, meet amethyst lips. Instead of that pink with the white throat, this one has this beautiful purple with that white throat, just like the other hot lips does. But let me tell you, the contrast really stands out. I am so excited for these to be in full bloom and to see them bloom all summer long. They attract hummingbirds just like the other one does. This is sure going to be one of our best sellers this year. I can't wait to share it with you. Thank you everybody for taking a minute to take a look at these brand new plants for 2020. Bauman Farms is open Monday through Saturday right now, nine to five. We look forward to seeing you soon. Well, it is such a delight to be here with Sarah at Portland Nursery on Stark Street. And Sarah, I have heard, little bird told me, that this is the year of the salvia. Have you yes, heard that? Yes, I did hear that from the same bird, I think. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> um, so I'm wondering though, it is such a big family. The salvia family is massive and there's so many different types in there. So let's quickly go over what that means. Yeah, so I mean, when people come in saying they are looking for salvia, we've got annual, perennial, herb, you know, um, short and stocky, big and whimsical, right, right. little flower, big flower. So um, we narrowed it down for people to kind of have the, the best salvias that we sell. Um, and I'm gonna just come right out and say, I was not ever a fan of salvia until I saw them in their element. You know, when you look at a salvia in a pot, it doesn't look very Right, right, great. and proof of that is one of the ones you picked here, which is May night. You, you saw it in this form and you went, eh, but then you saw it in a neighbor's yard, is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. And you went, oh my. Yes, <laughs> because it's got short, stocky, um, very um, upright vertical shape that clumps together. And you don't get that from a lot of other plants. Right. Um, yeah. Almost kind of like euphorbia can maybe do that a little bit, but um, it gives the eye some different texture because that's the key to design is right. different textures, yeah. different shapes. So. Um, it is probably, I would say now, in my mind, a staple that in a yard. Of, and one of your favorite things. Yes, yeah, and it just, um, it blooms for a long time, it's easy maintenance, it always And a perennial, it comes back. Yes. So yes. that even makes it better. Yeah, so I mean, it's my, I, if, of all the salvias, I would say that's my favorite. 
And then when I look right next door here, th this one is stunning, but not a perennial. But an annual. Right. So that's its downside for me because so I me like perennial stuff. Um, yeah, but I mean, look at the size of flowers right. that those are going to have. And hummingbirds love it, you know, so that's a, an extra plus. Um, so this one's gorgeous, but an annual. Right, which is fine because of its beauty. <laughs> yes. I need, then, to, I need to respect annuals a little You do. <laughs> um, I'm learning. Um, and then this is Salvia Hot Lips, which is going to be more of the whimsical variety. And this one we have a really hard time um, keeping in stock right, as right. well. Um, but it's got red and white flowers that the hummingbirds go crazy for. And um, a totally different look than the other two. It, it does indeed. And that's one of the things I like about the family is that they have different leaf structures oftentimes. The colors are different. And this one, I have to say, a lot of us, when, when we have sold this one, have people have complained because it comes out red, which is true. Mm -hmm. And then it turns, that bottom lip turns to white. So don't be afraid if you get it and you think, it's the wrong one, give it time, it'll turn to that beautiful blue and white. Yeah, and the red is very bright. You can see it, is. it from far it is. away. You're not gonna miss it. Yeah. And then, speaking of the, the stuff we can eat though, there are other kinds of uh, salvias that are in the herb garden. Yes. This one we sell as an herb, but tell me about it down front there. Yeah, um, last week we talked about some herbs and there are a ton of salvia herbs, not just the ones we covered. Um, but this one is the pineapple sage. It's got the bright red flowers and such a sweet flavor. Um, and so that one is a, a great one because it's got the real ornamental pop, the really bright red, but you can use it as right, an herb right. as well. So um, that is. And then tell me, in, when, because you guys do so much business and sales to so many people here, you get a lot of good opinions. Mm -hmm. What do you think have been like maybe a couple of the top best sellers for you? Um, definitely the pineapple sage, um, the hot lips. May Night had its year like five or six years ago. Everybody wanted May Night and then it kind of dropped off. Right, but right. Um, also the Salvia Black and Blue right. is huge. That one gets really tall. It's got a really deep blue flower, um, kind of bigger flower that, that people really like, almost you know, almost kind of similar to this one. Um, so those would, I would say, are the definitely the top. Well, you know, I have to say it is a magnificently huge family and salvias come in all shapes and sizes and if you want a really great selection all you have to do is go to Portland Nursery and look what they have and then pick some that work specifically for what your dreams are in your own garden. Thank you so much Sarah. Thanks. Well I'm here today with Mandy from the Portland Chrysanthemum Society and you know we don't typically think about chrysanthemums this time of year but Mandy, tell us a little bit about your society. So uh, we are the Portland Chrysanthemum Society. We're a pretty long running society. We've been around for over 80 years. So one of the oldest ones here at um, and we specialize in growing chrysanthemums, which they're not your typical types of uh, chrysanthemums that you may find at most of your nurseries. These are show chrysanthemums. Uh, they're one that um, you typically, um, that you show as national societies um, that uh, we hold once a year in October and November. And, and so, you know, you typically think of chrysanthemums in, in the fall, but, you know, here it is spring. Why is it important to, you know, plant and think about chrysanthemums now? Well, so you want to have, you, you want to get your, your chrysanthemums in your garden to, so that they can really establish a, a sturdy root base in the soil. Chrysanthemums can gr grow really well in your garden and also as well um, in a pot too. Um, so they take a little bit of work and initially just to get them established, um, make sure that they're fertilized at least a couple times in a season. Um, if, you're, if you're growing show moms, you want to fertilize them much, much more frequently. Um, but there's a little learning um, that's involved with growing chrysanthemums. You want to um, actually, I can kind of show you, you'd actually want to pinch the top parts of these so then you encourage them. Um, and then you also want to be able to stake blooms throughout the throughout the season because these flowers, I mean, they can, they can get, you know, a beat about, you know, as big as your face. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, so you want to be able to stake them. I usually use like a, a bamboo, um, a bamboo pole to hold up those flowers um, for when they're ready to bloom in fall. And then these, these varieties, you know, are, are hardy here for in the Northwest, right? Absolutely. They're hardy to 22 degrees. 
And then there's there there's a number of different varieties that you're you're growing. About how many different varieties do you do you propagate and, and grow? Well, so our society actually has about 300 different cultivars, which oh, is wow. several. There's there's thousands of different cultivars. And what we've done as a society is we we go to these national conventions and then we start trading amongst these different societies. Um, and it's very unique. Um, they're unique cultivars. Some of these cultivars, I think I've got one in my greenhouse that's from, it dates it was hybridized back in the 40s. So they're really old cultivars as well. Um, I always like to tell people with, uh, you know, w with growing chrysanthemums, a lot of these cultivars would be lost from, from our collections if we didn't continue to propagate them. Right. So now if pe people are interested, you know, you typically do a, a sale in, in the spring, but, you know, with all the, the COVID going on now, you're not able to do that. So where, where are people able to come combine these your chrysanthemums so we've adapted our plant sale we um our lead grower tamara belily she is um putting together uh plant, plant packages where you can order um you email our um grower and our uh, president what they'll do, do is they'll send you a uh, list of all of the different cultivars that we have available and then uh you'll fill out your order line, email them back, and then we'll put together your package. And then you can, um, you pay over the phone and then we'll um, set up those plants outside. And so it's a little roadside pickup plant sale. And then if people wanted to see pictures or get information, where's the best place for them to go to, to find that information? So uh, our Facebook page, Portland Chrysanthemum Society. There's also, we also have an Instagram page, which has some, some photos up as well um and then if you have any questions of course we're all like encyclopedias about these plants <laughs> so then then they can uh, get the information on how to contact you through facebook or email you for information on you know how to grow them and how to care for them absolutely yes so it sounds like you know you guys have been around and you've built up this amazing collection of you know these wonderful you know rare and unusual and different chrysanthemums you know, this. so for more information you know you can go to your website or not your website, but your Facebook page Facebook to get page. information and get all the pictures. And so, damn, it, you know, man, it's just been amazing to get to talk to you about all the passion for these chrysanthemums and you'll know, get those in the ground now for those, you know, blooms for this fall. So appreciate you being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching today. We want to remind everybody to be safe and healthy. If you have any questions about today's show or any other show, please go to GardenTime.tv. Ryan and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. around your home's exterior. Those ugly orange, green and black algae stains look terrible. Clean them the easy way with 30 Seconds Outdoor Cleaner. It's fast and works on all outdoor surfaces. With 30 Seconds, it's clean when you want it clean. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.